Hi, my name is Nick Stewart. I'm a meteorologist and I have been using Starlink now for the better part of five to six months on a day-to-day -day basis, really putting it to its test. And one thing I'm particularly interested in is how it handles weather events. We're gonna be using some radar data for this. So some quick explainers. The intensity of rainfall is measured in DBZ, basically decibels. It's how loud the rain is falling according to the radar heavier rainfall, a higher dBZ. If you're generally below 30 dBZ, that tends to be light rain. Between 30 dBZ and 50 dBZ, that's what we call moderate rainfall. If you're 50 dBZ or above, that tends to be really heavy rainfall and at times can be mixed in with some hail, especially in the upper levels of the atmosphere if you're not talking about a severe weather event that's impacting you. So we're gonna talk about that, talk about the rain's impact to Starlink, and well, how well it holds up. Starting out here is Cedar Rapids. Uh, we're under where I'm at right now. It's about, about 25 to 30 dBZ of precipitation. That's like a measurement of just how much precipitation's falling. We're about to get under a really heavy band here, upwards of 50 dBZ. Uh, you can see where we're running right now. Uh, we have no issues. Uh, we've not had an outage here for a while, but notice we did have this outage back here. If I look at some of the uh, stats. I go to outages. What you'll see is that we did have no signal received for a few different moments there. The longest was about 35 seconds or so back at 1258. So what we're going to do is look at the radar imagery and we're going to go back to 1258. So here we are, 1258. And what you'll see is that, again, where I'm at here, we were underneath this kind of area of 40 to 50 dBZ, there heavier rainfall, and that's what actually caused the outage here. Ping, not impacted by the rain whatsoever. Um, speeds, pretty typical. Uh, we'll probably push up near 100 here. Uh, looks like speeds are being impacted a bit. Typically my speeds are around 150 to 200. Uh, upload is usually around 15 to 16, so we're definitely seeing some impact uh, to the speed uh, that could very well be due to the rain that's moving through. And again, we're starting to see some oranges here. That's 40 dBZ. That's some pretty good um, rain that's falling right now. Um, the yellow for some kind of measurable impact is like about 30 dBZ or so with some greens around, so 25 to 35 dBZ. And you can see with the lighter rain, we're starting to get better speeds. We're back over 100 megabits per second for download. So it really is, it seems to be about when you start getting into like 35 to 40 dBZ, that's when you really start seeing a more meaningful impact on download speeds. But also latencies have had very little impact uh, despite all this rain. Well, that was with moderate to light rain. Now entering the heavy rain over 50 dBZ. Speed test took quite a while to even register that there was an internet connection, likely having some dropouts. Ping over 300 milliseconds, more reminiscent of normal satellite internet. And you can see speeds are being heavily impacted. But the fact that it's still working, even in 45 to 55 dBZ, is really kind of a testament to just how well this product works. The upload, definitely a lot more impacted, about five to six megabits per second. But again, we're talking about rather significant rain event happening right now. And again, this heavy rain only lasting for about 20 minutes or so. You can see pings not impacted, still getting pings around 30 milliseconds. That's pretty great. Uh, speed's a little bit higher here. Uh, I could have some better access on the satellite plane, but again, you can still see we're sitting below 100, which is a little unusual. Uploads, again, typically around 15 to 20. Uh, so running below that as well. So speeds are definitely being impacted by the rain, at least that's what it seems. Uh, as this rain, we'll call it moderate rain, kind of falls through our area. Uh, the heavy rain is just starting to move into the region now. Um, I would suspect this may start having an impact on latency uh, with the relatively high amounts of rain that's starting to fall here. So I wouldn't be surprised if we do see kind of an increase in latency. Um, 
best case scenario when I'm playing some Call of Duty, um, usually latency is in like the 45 to 55 millisecond range. Uh, right now we're at 54, 48, 51, 47, so about as expected. Ooh, 93 milliseconds, 92, 96, 90, 94, 93. All right, we're starting to get the heavy rain is now right on top of us. Ooh, we're down to 43, 51. Ooh. That might have been more of a satellite change as opposed to a, ooh, 106. God, these players are just the worst of humanity. 50 millisecond ping though. And we've had no outages, that's really the important thing. Is if you're going from one satellite and you're jumping to a far one, one that's probably like closer to the horizon, when you have to shoot through more rain, that seems to be when the latency really shoots up the most. Also, during some of these times, it might be shooting right through more of the rain as opposed to maybe shooting more this way where there's less rain. So it did seem to have an impact uh, in terms of latency. That I did see some higher latencies um, than I have in uh, quite a while playing this game. Um, I don't think it ever wasn't playable. 100 millisecond ping, it's not ideal, uh, but it only lasted for a few seconds really. Uh, it wasn't like a whole duration of 100 millisecond plus ping. But the other thing too, if I swing this over, is that there were no outages associated with any of that rain during that time. Probably a little hard to see, but. I have done tests now for the last couple of months dealing with a multitude of different types of rain events, from light rain to thunderstorms, and at all times of the day as well. And there tends to be a very kind of line of convergence as to how all of the internet services are impacted. And here's kind of how it goes. When you're talking about extremely heavy rainfall, in radar terms, reflectivity is over 50 dBZ. That's heavy, heavy rainfall. That is when you start encountering significant issues with network uptime. And Typically speaking, that torrential, torrential rain doesn't last that long in most thunderstorms. Usually it's for a few minutes before things begin to wind down. If you're above about 30 dBZ to that 50 dBZ point, that is when I start to see an impact of things like internet speed as well as latency. It's still totally usable, from my experience anyway. But there tends to be a reduction in latency, especially when you're playing things like games. That is when I feel like the latency is the most heavily impacted by torrential rainfall. Still totally playable, to be clear, in my experience, unless, again, you're dealing with heavy rainfall. We're talking about that 30 to 50 dBZ on the radar terms. That tends to be moderate rainfall rates. Nothing too heavy, but not too light. And if you're below about 30 dBZ in terms of rainfall, I have found very little issue, if any issue at all, with Starlink service. So that's kind of just the quick and dirty results that I have found over the last couple of months. And that's using a multitude of different events. Now, also keep in mind that Starlink has gone through changes during this time frame as well. More satellites have been added and new firmware updates are being released as well. So there may be some statistical issue just because of how much Starlink has changed. So we'll call this just in the beta period as a whole, uh, how things have been impacted. So I guess conclusion time, when it comes to rainfall events with my Starlink, I really feel very confident in its ability to hold up. Now, once this thing is unlocked and I can travel with it, we're really gonna have some fun with it because I plan on using Starlink to be my dedicated upload service for storm chasing video, as well as media coverage out in weather events. So we're really gonna put Starlink to the test because if there's anything I like, 
It's heavy rain, heavy snow, hail. You were watching it live right here on CPS2. Trees were getting ripped out of the ground at the base of this tornado. Tornadoes, etc. So we will have some fun with the Starlink service and really put it to the test once things become ungeofenced. So make sure you subscribe for that content coming out. We'll see just how well it can handle storm chasing. I think that's going to be a very fun video. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you do have any questions about Starlink, drop a comment below, uh, down below. Make sure you give it a like, subscribe for more content, and we'll see you again in the next video.